place. Guess I can take off the row. How you doing? Good. Good afternoon. Yeah, likewise, likewise. So you can hear me. Am I coming in clear? Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's perfect. Uh, it's perfect. Like I said uh, before, I I put out all these messages to all these MPs and nothing. Like I'm just a plumber or whatever. But everything I got was like thumbs up. They didn't even read what I sent them. They just were like, yeah, you know. But uh, so basically, I, and this is all conservatives too, right? They're the ones that say they're for the people right now, but they're not. It's just, you know, whatever. So uh, I, I, I guess this is, you, I don't know how uh, this will work, but uh, did you see those questions that I sent? I did, absolutely. And uh, I've been a big fan of your, your channel for a long time. Yeah, well, I, I know I've seen that like Spider Jerusalem is a really easy name to remember, right? Right. Um, so yeah, yeah, I know, yeah. and it's yeah, you know, we get good comments and stuff, right? It's it's uh, I actually there's only about three people I think that that I don't like their comments on, and I do like their comments. It's just they're just extreme, right? Right. You, you can't say this crap on YouTube. Like my yeah. channel gets hurt all the time. You know. Uh, I, I feel anybody that's preaching division should be suspect at this point. Well, it's I believe what it is is it's nothing wrong with it except the fact it's like the Pied Piper is leading the rats to the water. Um, or Ulysses, if you want to see Ulysses was, um, you know, that the Greek guy, right? He brought all of his, all the people on the ship and everything. And, and then what happened? He was the only one who came back to Greece alive. Everyone that went with them, that followed him, they're dead. That's yes. burning. To me, that's burning. Um, it, he's a banker. He was a banker. Yeah. He has banking policies. And in his policies, are not going to help the people. Sorry, I think I'm yelling at you. Um, they're not going to help the people that are actually following him. Like, I don't, I don't think he's that dangerous. What is dangerous is that he's got the wrong people following him. The people he's going to hurt the most, which. So, in the private security industry, uh, we say forget what they say and watch what they do is a, a cardinal uh, rule that we live by uh, out here. Yeah, I, I'd like because, that. Because. Uh, saying one thing and doing another is often uh, the way of things, especially when you get into the multi-billion dollar sector. You have to forget what they say and watch what they do. You have to read the tea leaves. And uh, Canadian politics seem to be quite uh, similar in uh, following suit, because uh, it's quite obvious at this point that the Canadian government and a handful of multinational corporations are essentially the same entity at this point. By, by watching their actions and not their words. Yeah, I, I, uh, I think you're right. And that's exactly what they do, not what they say. And, and this is a lot of what I say is a lot of jargon too, uh, to be honest. I, I've given out compliments to all these like journalists just so I can get them on. And, and a lot of them yes. I don't agree with. Um, there's a few I do, but I've been doing, but it doesn't matter. They, they like, oh, they're like, oh yeah, yeah, it's all good. They talk to you when you like butter them up, but not the other way around. You know what I mean? It's just, uh, no. I, I believe we have a problem with the media and it's the hard right media and the hard left. Both of them are, I believe, are, are, are just, they're off, the, they're Ulysses. They're bringing people off the edge and they don't care about yeah. them. And the problem is, is that no one on either side is saying, hey, you know, maybe, you know what I mean? Like, bring it, bring it back. It's everyone is saying, screw the other side. You know what I mean? It's yeah. not like, hey, maybe that uh, we are leading you guys astray and pull it back. No, it's it's all for me and screw the the. Public. I believe we're in a uh, I'm not in a rant, but it's it's all about class. We're in a class war, and everyone that's on the hard right and hard left, they're on the same class. They go to the same parties. I was I, I was in Ottawa for a while. I had a uh, little meetings and stuff, was security clearance and stuff. Um, so so when I, like when I was in the military. And uh, so I went to the bars. There was a couple places uh, I won't name the name, but there's a there's a hangout that they all went to, and both sides were there. I was talking to their aides, and their aides is like the one guy. Um, he had uh, his his like the, you know his the people working for him weren't even conservative. They were all liberal leaning, and they were like, yeah, as soon as we can get out of this this job, well, his, he, they worked for McKay. You know, I shouldn't say it, but yes. they worked for McKay. And, and when he was I'm defense familiar. minister, yes, I'm familiar. And his own side. It's just like the I'm not, I was appalled by that. These people don't even believe in the crap that's paying them. They, they, they just, just want a job. Yes. You know, you, you can't hurt. Sorry, go on. 
I feel that the what they would what they call liberals here in Canada have certainly led their own people astray, let alone their would be adversaries. And I'm seeing uh, on the ground out here on the streets, uh, people that consider themselves left wings uh, are 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 quite silent when I start bringing up what's going on in our country now. So I, I, what I'm seeing is a lot of soul searching going on on what you would call the left wing, which is really the right wing when you really think about it. Yeah, they, they're, they're they're certainly behaving as as one would say. Uh, they look they were the certainly, same. Yes. Yeah. yeah. And uh, a, a brief history lesson would show you that this is not a new story. Uh, the the Nazi Party of Germany called themselves socialists, and everybody else fascists. And this is this is not a new song and dance. Remember, forget what they say and watch what they do. That's that's for the the lesson that I've learned. I like that. So I'm going to use it. And um, just to let you know, I'm going to probably cut sections out of me, my rants out. So, you know what I mean? There's going to be editing, but it's it's done intention to make you look better and uh, pull me out of it because I don't want to be really. I would like to stay in the background, but I'm forced to come forward. Oh, right? you have my full permission to do whatever you feel is necessary. I'm oh. a huge fan of your, your channel, and I do like your uh, objective approach. And I don't consider you uh, on any wing, to be honest with you. No, I, nor do I. I see you calling it as you, as you see it. And I think that's the only... I honestly, I thought about this, deep thought about it. when Before I did this stuff, uh, I did this years ago. Uh, I had this channel before, and I did some pretty thing, whatever with it. And then uh, I stopped it, whatever. But I thought hard. I'm like, well, these... Uh, journalists and stuff they're biased well of course they're biased because they vote so i thought you know the first thing i'm going to do i'm not going to if i'm going to do the channel i won't vote that's the first thing i have to not do because i don't have a side now first thing i have no side so right you know, so it's it has to come from inside to be able to expel it out so inside i don't have a team but i lean conservative it's obvious as heck but i'm a, I, I think you're right i'm more of an opposition person and I'm always going to be the opposition. I don't think I, I you put the conservatives in. I'm leaning. I'm going to be. I, I believe that's where I'm going to stay. Stay in the purple and not PPC purple, which is they're nuts. You know. Uh, yeah. Well, what what I'm seeing is they've uh, essentially uh, been painted and maybe embraced it as a um, a far right swing movement, and they. Uh, are essentially just mirroring uh, who's who's currently in power with a, a window dressing of some extremist views. I would find it to attract disenfranchised demographics such maybe as ourselves, yeah. for yeah. example. And uh, what we call elections here in Canada are kind of uh, not really uh, a democratic process anyways. But uh, the... Uh, quote unquote official results that were pulled in, say, at the last election, maybe one year now, one year back, uh, we showed that they had gained significant ground. And uh, this this led uh, just revealed the weak leadership of the Conservative Party at the time, who had brought in these series of uh, uh, leaders to try and romance the center left to come over into the conservative realm. And th they're playing a game. Uh, which outed themselves kind of as frauds, if you ask me. Well, yeah, yeah, they, I, I believe it. I believe it. That, that I, I, fraud is a harder word than I, I want to use, but it's pretty close. It's, I, I'm going to say it again, and this is the third time, so it'll be the last time. Ulysses, they're taking their people down the drain, and they're getting rich along the way and famous. And this is the biggest reason why I did not want to be on camera, because I don't want to be the center of this channel. The center of this right. channel is the politicians. But what's going to happen now, because I'm, my, my channel is getting screwed over by a little bit of, by these, my competitors, right? And that's fine. That, that's, that's capitalism. So I have to step it up. And now what's going to happen is this, this is going to be cut up. I'm going to have to be in front of the channel. And then, you know what, people follow crap people. And I'm just a yaya and I don't want that. Because now it's about me. And it isn't about me. It's about the issue, right? And that's, I think, where every single politician is at. It's about me, 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 and my party. Instead of about you, 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 and you people. That, that's the, the first thing. Why did you get into politics? First reason why you got into politics, not the second one. You know, everyone gets into politics. You, you, I think most, besides the people who do it for family, it is, it's a good feeling. It's a swelling of love for your country, of nature, and this and that. And you feel that you can do better. And then they get in. 
And then they, they, they do the Pied Piper. They just, hey, how do I get more? The more followers I have, the more power I have, the more good I can do. So it's, it's a slippery slope. It's not an unintentional slippery slope, in my opinion. But uh, you, you have, you know, a good aspect. I feel at, at this point in time, uh, the people that are out there uh, standing up for the rights of Canadians, uh, rather than just honking their horns, and they're doing a fantastic job, of, by the way, there is blood in the water and everyone can smell it. Mm -hmm. uh, this is time for the would-be adversaries in power to sit down in the table and not call each other arbitrary names. No, no, no. This is time to negotiate because the writing is on the wall at this point. And perhaps all 355 of them may be out of a job shortly. This, it is, and it's only going to escalate. And um, I, as you yeah. as you probably read, I do not agree with protests because I, I, you know, I, I literally studied them. I took this in school. And what they do is usually nothing. Every protest since the 60s have done something later. But what they do is they, they initiate things. So that's great. So a protest is good for a day and then get it out because it's already been initiated. But what happens is, is the same thing I just said. You give someone power and those people that are leading that. Now what happens when the protest is over? They're like whoever they were before. Nobody. Right. right? So you don't want to stop that. And that's not like, and I'm not pointing the finger. That's, that's human nature. That's all of us. You know, hey, I, I don't want to lose my channel or, or, or any of this thing. So I got to work harder, right? It's, it's in the human nature. But what they do, but the problem is, is a protest. It goes to the point where it hurts the people. Most of the time, the protest hurts the people in the protest. Maybe the movement is helped, but not, not the people. You know, they, they, they've put their hand out and they've lost, a, you know, a knuckle. Right. So what we're seeing now is concern uh, that people are going to become intoxicated by the nature of power itself. And this is where you think that digging in uh, and entrenching yourself in a political protest is going to morph into something uh, where it would be very easy to lose the weight. And as an observer, this is my concern also. We're yeah. looking at a, a, a dig in siege mentality, which will uh, very quickly morph into something else that could be cancerous to Canada. We okay. have a, a fantastic opportunity right now to move forward as other countries have already and i'm okay. look, that's right and we have looking forward to a very optimistic spring and summer this year where we can take our lives back and and, and i think what what has happened to to this protest is it's a party and and i don't know about you but every party i've been into after i've been there and especially after a couple wobbly pops i don't drink anymore but but a couple wobbly pops i don't want to leave don't want the party right. to end well, it's a party. It's a festival. And there has, we've been shut down, like, you know, for two years, basically. Right. Uh, you know, yes. the party scene is shut down. Well, not anymore. So this is going to continue. They think that rhetoric is going to shut these people down. No, they're at a party. They're not going to shut down. It's happiness. They've, they're getting something very valuable. You can't see. And so you can't just say, oh, yeah, yeah, you stop it because of this or because of that or all these no it's going to keep going until finally the leaders get what they want they need to give be given something i don't care what or else it's just going to be continued and like you just said escalation and that's my biggest fear is the escalation and i know that i'm i'm even uh you know i get heated about it you know i can see that yeah <laughs> i feel that moving forward people are going to forget the price that we have already paid the untold people that have died from like fentanyl overdoses in their apartments from 18 months in isolation for example no one's no one's talking about that they're talking about who's racist and who isn't and it's time to move on from this anybody that's preaching division needs to be very closely scrutinized this is not time for a division in canada this is time for unity yeah this is unity yeah. to cast off who thinks who belongs on what side of the aisle and all this nonsense it's time for us to collectively take our country back and discuss what it means to really be a canadian absolutely you know second that it, you you've you know you've really nailed that nailed that on the head is that is that what it is you know or is there you know i know that there's a lot of laughing and hatred against trudeau or whatever um but 
is uh, is some of this that it started was it that or is it just lockdowns? I I, I think that the, the the Trudeau the way he speaks to people and has been speaking to people was fine before the pandemic. He's a well, you know, he's just not nice to the other side, right? But since this pandemic started, he needed to change his tune and talk to all Canadians because every single Canadian is, and, and this is um, getting the, the working class, uh, middle working class male worked up into a fury is the most dangerous thing. And, and everyone says it doesn't, there is a reason why the West conquered the world, you know? Yes. Open a history book. This is not new. No, no. And, and you're firing them up. And the thing is, is there's not enough guns to stop it. It's 30 million and they can't do these things. You can't well, hurt people and then have that on camera. Well, look what happened to Floyd. You know, you did that. And I, I don't know about you, but I, I didn't break anything. But my cup, it, like, uh, there's something wrong with the, the handle now. You know, what, when I watch that, it just now if they do that in Canada, which is going to have to happen. Because both sides so, are, are, sorry, yeah, you go on. I was going to say, the present situation has revealed to the people and to the world, I've watched this also in Japanese news, that the Canadian security and law enforcement apparatus is not capable of, in, of really muscling these would-be people back out of the streets. And this, thank God for that, that we do not have this... Uh, perceived police state which they inf they uh insinuated there was but when push already came to shove it is not manifesting itself there is no uh jackboot soldiers in the streets because we just don't have them and it's for the police to uh 1930 style crush any type of uh rebellion or protest as you can see they've clearly ordered them to do that and but, nothing is materialized but and i'm not against cops but cops they're a part of attention their job is to be a bully because they, they you called it they don't have the numbers to actually really do what they want to do they don't have it they don't have the money they it's, putting, it's putting them in a very difficult situation well, yeah. well i i'll tell you I, I was at a couple hot spots in the world right and every single time there's one, because I was there, I wrote a zero both times. And every single time, the first people to leave their job, they're not the ditch diggers. They're nothing. It's the cops. They leave their job. They're gone. They're like, well, forget this. We're gone. Yes. And and this is, and it's like I said, it's not against the but what what, what no, happens if it escalates, they're the first people to stop doing their job out of every profession. There's doctors working, getting shot at, like years That's into right. wars. But cops are done before before it's even declared a war. And, and right. because they know, I think, I, I believe that the, they know that their own thing that they can't stop regular, oh. but as soon as it goes to, to high levels, it's like, oh my. but, but I, I honestly think we won't get to, but sorry, go on. People are listening and they're on the streets or they decide to attend one of these protests. I want you to embrace the police officers there, not be adversarial to them. So I want you to consider the situations they are in, the situation that our leaders have put them in. Is, is is untenable and it, it's not fair to them and they're actually on our side oh yeah well the, you know it, it's always been known you use the poor to, to to handle the poor so so please you know they make what a hundred thousand dollars a year but that that's just a little bit better than than uh, the robert blue collar guy whatever so it's it, you're basically no. using them to, 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 and that's that's fine that's normal and that's that's okay in normal scenario i think we've gone to the point where we're going to be using or, or i think trudeau um, well, actually, the police uh, from Ottawa, the chief, uh, search the P, he said, uh, we need this to be handled at a higher level, at a political level. Because he, he's right. And you know what Trudeau said that day? He called them racist, misogynist, and something else. You know, yes. And, and it's like... I, um, His next statement was, do this or you'll be spanked to his rank and file staff very oh, publicly. I I, I, and, and, well, and it's happening. I, hugged at his pension strings and said, listen, you're going to lose everything if you do not comply with us. Who's the bully here? He's been put in, a, in, in an impossible situation. He doesn't understand the fact. Well, I don't know. I don't think, I don't think they, well, maybe they do. Actually, they probably do. You know what I mean? I, I should be more cynical than I. They, he understands what he's doing, but he doesn't, I don't think that it's going to, they're going to back down. There's people that there's nothing left. 
There's, there's, there's no money left in their pocket. There's nothing else they can do. And they only have one person that they can blame because all the politicians are telling them that it's one person or, you know what I mean? It's, it's a few. And Trudeau, he is at the tip of that spear. It's everyone is focused on him. And there's going to be at least 200 people in Canada willing to, willing to do, give the ultimate sacrifice to, for their stupid, for their cause, you know what I mean? Which is, I'm not stupid necessarily. It's extreme their demands. I, I don't think you can ask for the resignation of a democratically elected leader. It's just it's ridiculous. I'm sorry. <clears throat> you can ask for it, but don't don't put a condition. If he doesn't, we're going to stay here. It's that's, right. that's where it's like, whoa, sorry, but so in an aggravated a- aggravation style uh, policy that's taken place, people like myself in the past six years, I've lost ninety nine percent of my income. imagine the position that's put me in, right? I I went from a one percenter to the bottom of the 99% because of perhaps what I'm perceived of and given the the demographic and uh, uh, the needs of the multicultural society in the GTA area. You see where the position where we have got where these toxic policies have essentially uh, turned on their own people. Because I was not, uh, I was hopeful six years ago when he uh, was voted into power. I was like, uh, th- this is a le- uh, a crown from a blue blood here that maybe he will embrace uh, and reinforce what it means to be Canadian. And this is a conversation of what it really means to be a Canadian will be taking place for the near future, I see. Well, I was, um, when that election, the first round, right, before the, the, the everything after, yeah, I agree with you, Trudeau. Well, I, I thought cannabis being legal has been the, the most ridiculous thing. If you go to any temple, well, I don't even say that, but you know, it, it was spread out everywhere in Canada, especially Canadians. Like cannabis is a uh, 70, over 76% of Canadians say they've smoked cannabis within the last two years. Like, right. so, so that was it. And then the other two plans were verbal. Uh, Harper's plan was like, we're going to do it eventually, you know, not you, but you know what I mean? That's what he was saying. He- he was pushed to, and well, the, and the, the other that, the mall care one was was another one. It was make it legal now, and we'll worry about it later. You know, we won't find right. you for it, and then we'll worry about the legislation later. I think that their plan, the liberal plan, was better. It, it took a year to get, come in, but when it opened, it was give. They had a lot more thought put into it. You know, because right. I mean? no one was getting fined for for having it. But that was it. Personally, that's that's a one stupid issue very tiny issue but a very large one i think you know uh, especially that train um, well in the 1930s the bolsheviks subsidized vodka consumption for the the masses and gave them very very cheap vodka to keep everyone medicated while they removed the last semblance of imperial constitution which they had that, it's and called that, a pusser a pusser that's, that's back from english time you know that's they, exactly right get your daily and, pusser and the uh the Russians suffered to this day from it. A uh, culture of al- alcoholism has embraced and eviscerated their demographics. And this is why you're seeing uh, a significant a Russian military movement uh, now, because in 10 years, they will not have enough adult males to uh, man their army. So if they're going to take some, see some ground, now's the time, because they won't have the manpower 10 years from now. And this is why we're seeing th- this movement now. And it's part of a larger... Uh, essentially the end of the globalization not the birth of it this is the end of it yeah well i think we're just gonna i don't i don't want to i agree with you i don't believe it's gonna go there's a there's no end of anything once things get started we can't kill them but we're gonna retract to a point again local but but this was a kind of a plan if you looked at the factories this is remember the people talking with business people you know romney people they they we're selling our factories to China because the factories we had here were obsolete. They just, yes. they used too much power. They, and so what was happening, but this is a 20 year plan. And in the process, in this 20 yes. years, a lot of people are going to get hurt. So the idea was to sell them our crap, rebuild new, but I don't think I've read this. Any politicians say this out loud, but that was kind of an idea. And you know, what does make sense, except there was nothing, no compensation for the people that lost in the middle. Nothing. Yes. Nothing for you. A former client of mine uh, rhymes with General Motors, and he expressed to me he went to uh, a Hyundai plant in the 1980s in South Korea and watched them build a car in seven minutes. He said, it's over. It's over. 
and this was in the 1980s, and they said they essentially had no choice, so they would not have a brand. And then they uh, acquired a Suzu, and that was the uh, – now they're selling more uh, Chevrolets in China than they are in the United States. And this was a done deal by 1994. And this is where, where our, our free trade agreements and all this stuff happened out there as well, right? And they've run their course, and we're moving in another direction as well, right? Well, uh, there was a factory uh, in the Niagara region, and um, they had a problem. They, like, I went in there for technical things. And this guy says, he says, we have a problem with a bottleneck. We, I th- ah, the numbers. I think they're, they're putting out 300,000 uh, bars a minute. And the only reason he says we can only put out 300,000 a minute is because we have people at this bottleneck. Everything else in the whole system, they made, uh, you know, chocolate bars um, or healthy bars, whatever. And uh, everything would have, it would have gone up to a million. And actually, I think they've done it because they had three people there. Then they actually put five. That was a solution. Um, they put five people in that area. It sped it up a little bit, but it, it didn't matter. A machine, we're, it moves faster than us, a human being. It just... Yeah. So, so, you know, the, the, there, I, I hear people when they say, well, it's taking away people jobs. Yes, but I think we should just tax them more because there's no people in the factories. And, that, and just so they contribute a little bit more because they were not getting the um, income tax off of it, off of these factories. Right. But help them build these factories that are, that are like modern because they can put out a little tiny factory is putting up 2 million bars a day. It's like a, more than Canada needs in a factory the size of a mall. Uh, half yeah. the size of, the, of, a, of a strip mall. So, you know. I, I, I foresee in the future you'll see a reindustrialization of the Americas taking place. It's already, uh, uh, it'll be fully automated, of course, to, be, to remain competitive. With human beings, we've just uh, engineered ourselves out of a job that way. And we should embrace it. We shouldn't be running from said things. Well, this is part of the reason why I went into art. Art is going to be the last thing that people will buy that want to have a human made because there are computer AI programs that, that are really good, at, make good art, but people want it from a human. Usually they want someone who's like gone through trials. <laughs> you know, I haven't enough, but, but that this is, it's, it's never going to, I don't believe that thirst will be quenched. There will be a right. lot of jobs we're going to lose, but, but that's, that's one. And, and art also <laughs> leads to innovation. It's not, yeah. The same, you know what I mean? So art and inventors and all these and entrepreneurs, that's where we all are going to live. We're all going to work. I believe yes, we, we need to be over. embracing change. We shouldn't be a fear it. We should embrace it. it. Though it always, every time there's a change, there's always a negative. I, in my opinion, right. it's just how big is that negative and how much are, are people looking to, um, you know, compensate the negative uh, impacts? That's right. There is a, yeah, sorry. An, an ancient Hebrew expression is the ones who fail to read the tea leaves are no longer with us. Yeah. Wow. I like that one. What time? One time. Right? That one yeah. gets right, right to the bone. The ones who, who do fail to read the tea leaves are no longer with us. Well, it's, it's it, it, you know, ring- I'm a uh, Mormon, but the, the Holy Spirit, I don't know how much is is a Jewish, but that's, Reading all the tea Hebrew. leaves is the Holy Spirit in, in, in our, you That's know what right. I mean? It's reading. This is another, di- another evidence of division is the difference between Judaism, Islam, and Christianity. They are I, essentially the same religion. And, and hey, I admit I was probably such an ignorant idiot before. And then I was luckily forced to go to the Middle East. I had to take a Quran course, right? So I did, right. and, I, and I did it with my, I gave it, I gave everything. I gave them my, you know, possible beliefs, right? I gave it when I took the course. I thought, hey, I'm going over to the, you know, I'm going to war, I better, you know, work. So right. uh, I did, and, and I found, wow, like there's this one, I'm on, uh, a priest, um, you know, uh, you know, or, you know, I know he does, but we'll start. So they, uh, he was a, a real estate agent. Right. He was from the street. You know, just like in your dumb. He was from the street. He took on a secondary job. And this guy was, it, it, he was, it was amazing. It was just like talking like to, to normal, normal guy, this and that. But he had the extra at that point in his life to, to give the, and I should tell you, he, he taught me a lot that the five pillars of Islam are just to me, or you can't, no one can argue with them. And if you do, you're an idiot. And then, then that led to, I had to go to Israel after that. And then it was like, Cause you know, you, you read it, especially when you're a young, dumb kid, it's like, oh, all this, the Jews own this company and they own, you know what I mean? All this stuff. And it was like, 
complete opposites. Like these people are the ones leading the front of all the good things, you know, soda stream. It's just a minor company, but more people are drinking water, healthy water because of a company like soda stream. And it's, it's such a side issue, but it's no, you know, and then, and then, like you said, I know I'm ranting again. Um, the Jewish faith, there's so much goodness in it. It start, everything started from it. Right. And, and the more I research in my religion, the more I have to go research in, you know, in, in Israel. Right. Or all, um, Sorry, I know I have to cut that out. I know I, I don't think we can talk about religion on this channel. I don't know. No, I, I don't know. I don't. Uh, I'm actually not a YouTuber. I'm more of a consultant, but I'm happy to uh, to jump in whenever I'm invited to do so. I am often on the uh, Mike Martin's podcast. They seek out my expertise often. Mike Martin. Okay. Mike Martin. Yes. And he's uh, he's moving into the Odyssey uh, realm, I believe, but he's yeah. still getting a he's still leaving a significant uh, YouTube footprint. And uh, he often seeks my advice for geopolitical and security matters, which I'm happy to give my two cents for whatever that's worth. <laughs> well, and that's it. And, and do, do you want like me to put your company or something up or something? Uh, I'm actually just working independent. I okay. like I was one a uh, an oil and gas executive and that came to an abrupt end in 2018 and I've been struggling to find my feet ever since. But having the time and uh, being a little more mature, I've been paying attention and decided that it was time to weigh in, especially when someone like yourself was inviting me. So I'm happy, happy to to meet with you and and hear what you have to say. I've been a a fan of your channel for a long, long time. Yeah, and, and likewise with your comments like i know it's this is the only bridge we've had and this is how i kind of like to keep it as much as possible i have no choice right. anymore though um well, i like the anonymity of it so i'm not going to put uh, anonymity helps people what is that greek expression you want someone to tell the truth put a mask on them right so it helps them, right i believe and, and i have a pretty good memory of people with comments but i have the i remember the feeling of the of the commenter i don't remember what they said but i know i'm like oh yes. that one mm. i already know i don't like that one commenter though no, they're not i don't think i have any bad people there's about three that that <clears throat> you know that that just have to they put extreme comments and that's you know because you well, can't say these things in the world we live in right now expand your footprint and watch your enemies multiply well, this is the, my biggest surprise is I have never, not yet, and I'm, I, I know it's coming because this is, this is the fire I love, is uh, I, I haven't got any hate mail yet. No one. And look, you see my opinions, but every, yeah. every, I have, but it's all sneakily. They call me, it's, it's done subversively. It's not direct. David, John, F you or what, nothing. And I put out my, I just put out on Twitter um, that these people were anti-Jewish. I said, <laughs> you forgot to put... They were listing all these companies as if you forgot, you forgot to put Safe Space Cafe, you know what I mean, on the list, right. saying, you know what I mean, we're, we're the Jewish bad people too. Did all that, nothing, like not even a negative, like I, I'm, I don't know why. I honestly hope it does come around because that's the fire, like as long as it's um, well, reasonable. Previously, and in, in another life, I spent some time as a Buddhist and they call uh, Muslims, Judeans, and Christians, all followers of Abraham. They call them the yeah. same name because well, to them, they see a difference, right? They call them the same name and they're like, anybody that breeds division, religious division, is truly an enemy to be feared, right? This is, we have an opportunity now, rolling into the spring of 2022, to uh, become a unified people because our, our would be friends out there have, uh, pulled off the fig leaf and we find the emperor has no clothes you know what i mean this yeah. is not a new story this is a uh history repeats it's just the costumes are different yeah. and uh it's time to be alive to witness this trudeau is a product of his own this is the demise of his own success because what he has he's become a global um like uh, i don't want to call a lightning rod a, a good lightning rod in his sense of the um what you want to call woke or, or whatever of the you know this new which i kind of agree with it's hard to to become a nicer softer person it really is you know well, but he, i did he, have the pleasure of yeah. meeting him one time oh and, uh as a uh i can't really say where but i did get a chance to meet him at, at uh 
uh, once, and he is not aware of the the impact that he has because he does not live in the same world that you and I have. So unfortunately, being sheltered your entire life, he believes it is one way because it's the only way he's ever known. And we should actually be a little, uh, feel a little bit sorry for him this way because he's probably not aware of the harm that he's caused. And doesn't understand why people hate him so much because he's unaware of it. You're right. And that's, hey, I, I, I'm exactly that. You know, it's like, you hate, but I don't know why. What am I, you know why? But my back, he, had, because he's such a global, um, he was such a global follower by, by like Vogue magazine, no, no, wait, sorry, the one from New York, the Chandelaine or whatever, all those type of people around the world love him, the Hollywood glitzy glam. Well, that makes what happens to Trudeau worldwide news. So this went global very, very fast. This went faster global than any other protest that's been going on. Germany has been having protests, Austria. It didn't, it connects in that country. And, and sometimes it hits the BBC. But this one, within one day, it was in the BBC and the Deutsche Welle. It, you know, it was spread across, uh, spread across automatically because Trudeau's globalist name, it's, it's, it's a backfire on this one. And he's in what he's going to do. I think he's getting reinforced by his own crowd to say, hey, just, just, just push these people down. They're all scum. Push them down. I, I do have someone that I want you to look into. His yes. name is Peter Zahan. Peter the Hun? Z -E no, uh, Zahan. Z-E-H-I-A-N. And he has a, uh, a series of, uh, uh, not podcasts, but presentations that he had done for different industries. He's a geopolitical specialist. Okay. And he has something called the Disunited Nations, and I recommend that you watch because I feel that you would uh, be able to extract a lot of information out of it. Definitely, I do. And, you know, so make sure I... Exactly. He's a geopolitical uh, analyst for industries, particularly agricultural and uh, energy sector. And he has some very, very interesting observations, uh, particularly about Canada and our present situation. He also has the United States nailed down very, very well. And uh, a documentary called Disunited Nations, and he goes into demographics uh, specifically. And I would say he's nonpartisan. And uh, it's, you can take a look and draw your own conclusions, of course, but I do recommend you look him up. I, I do. And my only, the, the SIO had nothing to do with that. It was United Nations. I have, okay, Canada, uh, Lester B. Pearson, we're the, we're the, was the beginning of having it as a, as a military force. And we were a big leader in that in the beginning of it. And I, I actually kind of believe in it, except Absolutely. it's been taken over on like so many fronts. The problem is, is a lot of people can't, I believe, they can't see the good in something when it's a lot of bad in it. But they're all different divisions. It's not, it's not all a UN and this whole blanket underneath. No, it doesn't work. It's not really like that. There's all these different factions within it. it the last major United Nations mission was to liberate Kosovo in 1999. Yeah, yeah. Was there. That's getting close to 25 years ago. Yeah, they, it was uh, useless. It was completely stupid. I'm sorry, I'm going to go on a rant. Two magazines, and basically, if you get in a firefight, they're going to send in the helicopters and take you away. That's the UN way of doing it. NATO came in, and it was like, to the teeth, you were armed, loaded down. It was a different mission, but it was the same mission. Yes. So, yeah, like you're right. Kosovo was the last UN mission. Yeah. Yep. And uh, many people that are watching your show would not be alive uh, long enough to remember uh, how how different of a, a flavor the United Nations had uh, a generation ago. It is uh, they've bred themselves into redundancy and uh, it, anything that happened is self-inflicted straight up. Yeah, I think so. I, I believe that. Too. Well, it's people going up, bringing up the level of, uh, of certain things, but they're not remembering that there's other people that are not at their level. They're not living at their same level. They can't be raised up without them getting, you know, without the hand underneath. But that's the UN right now is it's too many elites running it. And I think that's what you, you know, oh, uh, not elites, intellectuals is what I should call them. Yes. A, uh, having the division will end up uh, our society uh the wars will be fought by fools 
and the uh, the policies will be made by madmen. And this is where we're at at the present moment and for all to see. And I'm, I'm grateful that Canada decided collectively to step up and bring our situation to the world because, of course, many other countries are uh, suffering the same fate. What? And we're here at the turn of the tide, if you ask me. Well, it was, it was, it was, sorry. Get, yeah. Yeah. I, it will get messy and it will get worse before it gets better, but it will get better. I'm yeah. quite optimistic about this. I concur completely. It was, uh, it was a good night to end on. Um, his name, Boris Johnson, Bojo, was in a little bit of trouble for yep. his little, his sneaky party he had, whatever. Um, That's right. And, and so he said, hey, how do we turn this off? So what they did is they just said, oh, we're going to open it up. So as soon as yes. that happened, let's open it up. At the same time that, you know, what's going on in the States, the, 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 uh, the polling, right? Yes. And all that, it's like, hey, this is kind of a good moment. And then the polling that's going on here with Trudeau, his numbers really aren't going down. But what's happening is, is the other side is, I think, is rising right now. So it was a perfect time. It was opportune time. And, and Trudeau, after he said, we're going to open up, Trudeau was like, no, we're going to stay. And we're going to actually increase. And, and yep. you know, you, you've just... You've you you you've destroyed the divide. You know it's 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 broken. You can't bridge now anymore. That's right. The floodgates are open at this point, and we need to be at the table negotiating, not throwing your hands up and walking. Everyone's racist or whatever it is. Either either we all are or no one is. And th this argument has been beat to death. Beat to death. I don't understand how I who how are they you know. Why are they called racist? I don't understand. Okay, yes, that Jewish thing that was there, that was racist and it, you know, whatever. But that was one yaya and he wasn't even talking. Like the crap that was on his flyer had nothing to do with freedom. You know, it didn't even say freedom. And I think it was like anti-freedom to some people. Like, Right. And, but so, but how can you just paint them with this brush where it's not that? And that's, I think, it is, is, that's the reason why we have six now today six uh, protests not one it, you know now it's, right. it's one it's six and and tomorrow or, or monday i think that our media is going to hit these people if you've been watching twitter um these young most of them female reporters right because that's what what, right. what is everyone's hiring right at the moment right they are uh, not used to being spoken to like that because they come from a different class i believe sometimes and, and a different lifestyle. Like if you go to, you know, you go to university, it's, it's, it's nicer. But if you go to um, college or, uh, or forget college, you go straight into the labor workforce. You're dealing with, they're the same good people, but they speak to you different. Like you do, you screw right. up, you hear it, you know, <laughs> not this, oh, well, don't worry about it. We'll help you later. Though they have no intention. They're just trying to make you feel better. We have an opportunity now to open dialogues and erase barriers and bring uh, a sense of unity. And this is what I'm going to preach. And uh, any form of violence is in is, and, and peaceful protest is not the Canadian way at all. And anything incited will have a political agenda. There, this is not how Canadians protest and this is not how we do business here. I think you're right. I think what would happen is, is mostly Canadians are very well thought out. Uh, they, they think about what their opinion is most of the time. They're not running on emotion, right? And I think that belief is for better, for worse. That's how Canadians have always been right. calm, cold, collected. That's the, and I'm not, you know, but I'm aware that the people around me are, you know, that's the average right. Canadian voter. Now it's, it's basically collected. That's all that's left. They're collected. And, but it's, Which, it's not the collective that I meant in the first sentence. It's the collective they're getting together. And then, and when I listen to the song, The Hurricane, over and over, I'll tell you, I can listen to that song three times and I could do a lot of damage. And that's, that's what they're doing to each other. They're spinning Trismegistus-like into this, or, or whatever, song, um, into a fury. And, that's and right. It's, and it's only making a tornado, right? Or a hurricane. The, the powers that be will want division because that is part of the divide and conquer politics one-on-one -on -one ruling a country. This is not a time for that. If you want to resist, unite. The, the, moving forward, that, that's the secret to the success here. We're not left-wing and right-wing. We are Canadians. Those The people that run our country, they're the ones that believe in this political ideology where we have to be separated out on the street. We're all Canadians. 
there is no need, uh, no time for violence. It's not necessary. It, it will accomplish nothing. Well, uh, thank you, uh, Jacob, for coming on. Uh, My pleasure. It's been awesome. If we can do this again, it would be great. Absolutely. Absolutely. I enjoyed our time. It's good to get to know you. Uh, please uh, Skype me, email me, whatever you want to do. We'll exchange information via email. As that yeah, yeah, do that afterwards. I'm going to put this all up. I just decided I'm, I don't care anymore. My channel, I, I make a lot more money in my other vocation. Like, so, right. but I'm putting all my time into this. So, you know what I mean? But I, actually, I got to, yeah, yeah, no, I just got to put it out. Who cares, right? Yeah, let's do it. Let's do yeah, it. Yeah, yeah. I, uncut, unfiltered, put it up. Um, I'll, I'll put it up in, what, 20 minutes? But after that, so hand me some information, anything you want me to put on the, on the description, um, right. through the emails I, and, and no, I'll keep that private, you know, I, I'm hundred percent confident with whatever you want to put up there. You have I, my I think we're just going to do it. Just put it up. Yeah. I don't know. I, you are being on, I'm just more worried about what I've said, <laughs> to be yeah. honest. Fair enough. We'll, we'll see. I, I accept all ramifications of our, of said, uh, interaction for today. How's that sound? Outstanding, Jay. Well, okay. So I look forward to your email and, uh, we'll discuss a running issue with this. This is fantastic. And again, thank you. Appreciate it. Excellent. You have a great day. I'll be in touch. Thank you. Have a good day.